loudness war is raging. Some believe that louder is better, while others believe it's not. I say forget the loudness war. If you produce your own music, the loudness war can be a big distraction from the art of writing and producing great sounding music. In today's society, you have greater pressure to master music loud because music fans have come to expect it. Moreover, we have to compete with the labels, or more importantly, you have to compete to get the label's attention. If you're looking for a deal with a record company, publisher, music library, or like me, pitching for your next big TV or film job. Truth is, thousands of producers are churning out music every day, all vying for someone's attention, be it a music company or just music fans. If you want to reach your audience, being heard louder can help you. This doesn't mean I necessarily agree that making music louder is better. It just means I'm aware if I want to sell more music or compete with my fellow TV composers, I need to make my music perceived to be louder without squashing the life out of it. And so do you. To add to this, it's important to understand who the music's intended for. A jazz trio is going to be treated differently to a dance track being mastered for the clubs and the dance scene. A teen pop song being prepared for radio will have a completely different master to a classical album of Chopin's piano works. It may sound stupidly obvious, but understanding the mastering direction and the style of music before you actually sit down and master will help you to create great sounding masters. So, with that in mind, check out part two on how it all started. And I'll teach you a couple of tricks you can use at the writing and mixing stage to help create a louder master without squashing the life out of your track. See you in part two.